Neo Case. Hey guys, welcome to another video. I am Mr. Neil Kiss, and in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the five love languages from Dr. Gary Chapman and how it applies to your dance journey and particularly in how it helped me increase my self-awareness in Kizomba, which is my primary partner dance. So if this is your first time hearing about the five love languages, it was originally a book by Dr. Gary Chapman, where he talks about how different ways we like to receive love and then also how to give love. I found this really, really insightful because during the beginning, when I was finding out that I was really, really addicted to Kizomba, I was very curious as to why this was. I took the quiz and I found out that my top two love languages were physical touch and words of affirmation. The top one physical touch here was really the key motion because Kizomba is kind of like one of those walking hug dances. And I figured out this was one of the things that drew me to the dance that catered to me and something that I consider important in my life. Yeah. So the five love languages that Dr. Gary Chapman mentions in his book are quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, acts of service and gifts. Basically, these are different ways that you can express love to another person. And it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship either. It can be between a mother and their children, father and their children, between an aunt or an uncle, friends, teachers, it doesn't matter. These are just ways that you find out how you like to receive love that resonate more with you. If you're interested in reading that book, I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. There's also a quiz that you can take if you're curious about figuring that out as well. You can go to 5lovelanguages.com, take the quiz, and you can figure out what your love languages are and start your journey to unraveling your own self-awareness in that particular area in your life. And I do want to share that this isn't the end all be all idea that encapsulate everything as it relates to relationships or love. I feel like it's just one of those tools to add to your toolbox to help you build self-awareness with you and other important people in your life to enhance your relationships. I feel like it's a good barometer to start. And then from there, you can dig deeper and find out more and what pertains to you particularly. So again, it's just a tool to move you closer, to bring you more aware. It's not the end all be all. And one aspect I found over time after I initially found out about this was that just because you are, let's say your top love language is words of affirmation. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you give per se. It's like, for me, for example, I know I love to receive words of affirmation, but I'm not huge on giving words of affirmation, but I am, I do find myself tending to give more acts of service when I think about the people that mean a lot to me in my life and how I want to help them and show up for them. That feels like a more natural fit versus showering them with words of affirmation. And another spinoff on this idea by one of my good friends, Laura Riva, she created a blog describing the love languages of dance. I actually did a video on that. I did a podcast on that and I did a podcast about this particular topic with my friend Emily B. So I'll put all those links in the description so you can check them out and continue your journey of self-awareness. So like I mentioned before at the beginning of the podcast, I took the test. I found out that my top two love languages were words of affirmation and physical touch. And so I was like, aha, I found it. This was the love language that was going to be super popular among all of the other Kizomba lovers that I knew at that particular time. So I was like, okay, I had my Facebook group going and I was like, okay, I want to find out more people who were in the Kizomba scene and what their love languages were. So I created kind of like this mini project research, if you will. And basically I just created like a simple site and I said, Hey, this is a project that I'm doing. It's in two steps. First step was to take the quiz at the five love languages.com and find out what your top two love languages were. And then the second part was to fill out a survey that I created. I think it was through survey monkey at the time to list your findings as I got more and more people to fill out this particular survey. And I was very curious to find out what was going to be the top love language among other people that were super addicted to kids like I was. Um, there wasn't any screening about who filled out the test or anything like 
like that. It was just kind of like something I did in fun. But I believe I got about like 200 to 250 people to fill out uh, this survey over time. And I was able to take a look at their results. I wasn't surprised at the top love language. It was physical touch, but I was surprised at the second one. The second love language that was most popular among Kizomba lovers was quality time. Quality time for me at that particular time was actually the last love language at the bottom of the list out of all of them. I think it, for me, my order was words of affirmation, physical touch, acts of service, then it was gifts and then quality time was very there at the bottom. The top two love languages, like I said before, from the survey were physical touch and quality time. So physical touch, obviously it's a walking hug dance. You can definitely get closer to your partner than you would dancing like Lindy Hop or Salsa or anything like that. Tango is also a dance where you can see like very nice close hug that you could stay in for the entirety of the dance and it wouldn't be weird or awkward or anything like that. And the quality time aspect of it was surprising at first, but definitely if you're looking for that type of connection on the dance floor, it's really, really awesome because it is one of those dances that can definitely take you away to where if you are one of those deep connection dancers and that's actually one of the love languages that i mentioned about before from laura riva's blog so make sure that you check that out but for those deep connection dancers they just really want to connect with their partners and close their eyes and disappear and this is quality time and i feel like nowadays quality time is hard to come by even in a romantic relationship you know like how common is it to see somebody spending time with one another and there's no cell phones there's no notifications there's no calls or anything like that and really just spending time with that one person and so if that is a love language that appeals to you kizomba you might be already dancing kizomba or kizomba may be a dance that is good for you to try out one aspect that I also found interesting is that there were some people that were filling out the survey where physical touch did not fall within their top love languages, but quality time did. And so even though they weren't a super touch person, they did appreciate the quality time aspects that Dancing Kizomba provided them. If you are enjoying nerding out on self-awareness in dance, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to be putting out weekly videos talking about different aspects of dance, nerding out on musicality, creativity, fundamentals, and more. So definitely smack that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And let me know what are your top love languages in the comments below. So like I mentioned before, I found out that one of the things that drew me to Kizomba is that Kizomba actually became a healthy outlet for me to get my physical touch love tank filled without the hassles of trying to find a romantic partner. And like I mentioned before, just because you are in a romantic partnership, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get your love tanks filled. Is your partner a physical touch person? Is that something that they like to do? Do they do it just to please you, but they don't really derive any satisfaction out of it? There's lots of different factors that come into play when we talk about romance and it gets complicated and things like that, but Kizoma just seems to be a way to kind of get into that space and enjoy the connection of the dance and promote healthy types of touch. When I think of promoting healthy types of touch, especially in dance, I feel like there's so many different levels that kind of come to mind. Definitely there's lots of societal pressures around touch and what's appropriate touch, especially Coming in as a man, you wanna be careful that you're not being creepy unintentionally or inappropriate with your touch or making anybody feel uncomfortable, definitely. If you take that further, then you also have the dangers of sexual misconduct and unwanted touch. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have men and women that are dealing with lack of touch, yeah? so unwanted touch, lack of touch. There's a lot of navigation between those two spectrums, yeah? It's not something that's easy to talk about just in one particular video. I'll probably put out more videos here on this particular topic, but it's definitely an interesting spectrum to think about. It's like, hey, I am in lack of touch, so I need more touch, but I want the right type of touch because I want the touch that feels good to me and I don't want it to be, I still want the one to have in a, be a touch inappropriately. So very interesting balance to think about for people who aren't in romantic relationships 
And depending on who is in your inner circle of friends, you might not have an outlet of touch. If it is in your family, you're not in a romantic partnership, then like I said before, Kizomba, dancing Kizomba could be a healthy outlet for that to get that particular need met. Actually share some of my journey from a mentality of touch scarcity to touch abundance through Kizomba and dancing Kizomba for several years. I won't get on to the details of that, but I will link the blog in the description below so you guys can check that out and read it for yourself. Kind of see the, the journey that I went through there. And one of the things that I find really interesting about talking about touch in dance and professionalism is how the dance scene or the partner dance scene is very unregulated as well. If we take a look at massage therapists, for example, they touch their clients and customers for a living. And from my understanding, through the massage therapists that I know that do it professionally, there's definitely ethics training and how to navigate touch appropriately and professionally and make sure that nobody's being made uh, uncomfortable. And there is a licensing structure around that to help enforce and also give proper training to the professional to do their job well and provide that service to their societies yeah and we don't have that in dance yet so i know this year in 2020 there was kind of like a big hoopla that happened around some instances of sexual misconduct in different dance scenes and laura riva the one who wrote the love languages of dance blog she is putting in some work to hopefully create a international professional social dance association to help guide professionals in the dance scene on how to navigate the ins and outs of touch when it comes to paying clients attendees of festivals protecting the attendees protecting the professionals helping navigating touch around that because when it's not regulated then it just opens up the opportunity for things to get really hairy and then there's no nothing to kind of like look up to or look around for structure around what's appropriate versus inappropriate in that setting you know there's a blog that Laura Riva wrote that will be in the description as well. And I also did a podcast with Laura Riva on this topic as well. And I'll link that below as well. So you guys can check that out if that's something that interests you. As a dance instructor, knowing about these love languages of the general ones by Dr. Gary Chapman and also the ones that Laura Riva brings up, this is something that I ask my students that take private lessons with me. So I can find out more about them and how to cater the knowledge that I have to help stimulate their growth and get them to level up their dancing and do what feels good to them and, and also just know what their love things are. And I think that makes me a better instructor. On the note of teaching dance, teaching is definitely one of my fortes that I have discovered through teaching Kizoma for many, many years now, since 2014. If you are interested in hearing my perspectives and experience across teaching, then definitely make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be putting out a lot more videos each week about different aspects of dance. And if there's a particular topic that you're interested in me talking about as a dance instructor or question or something like that, hit me up in the comments below and I make sure that I respond to every single comment. The, I don't have a million subscribers yet on YouTube or anything like that, but definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Another little hint of video that's coming up as well is that I have been using Notion a lot and I'm going to be showing some screen flows and creating some Notion templates. And one of them is pretty cool if you're training a student or even for yourself, you have a place where you can list your love languages and your dance love languages in one place with your dance training so you can kind of keep it all together and keep those things in perspective, yeah? So thanks so much for watching this video. This is a really cool topic and it's been interesting to see how the topic has even like matured over time in my brain as I've shared it more and more and this isn't the end of it. It'll, I'm pretty sure maybe a year or two from now, I'll be able to take a look at this topic and I might have some new insights. I appreciate you guys tuning into the video and nerding out with me on this particular topic and I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.